I'm Peter Copney. I'm Director of the Centre for Computational Science at University College London. Our catchphrase there is advancing science through computers. So we tend to have a lot of uh, interesting applications across many different domains. Currently one of the most pressing and interesting is what we would call computational biomedicine, which is now exploiting this revolution that's occurring in e-health and information technology in terms of being able to capture and marshal personal data uh, that can then be used to make predictions that will then be used also in health treatments. As a scientist working at the interface of, of several disciplines, you're actually a professor of, of uh, physical chemistry, computational chemistry at uh, UCL, um, but you're involved in, in other projects. Um, so, so what does big data mean to you? Um, yeah, I also have a chair for the record in computer science at UCL, so life is complicated. Well, big data now is precisely where it's at for the medical domain. It's becoming feasible to generate vast amounts of data, particularly from gene sequencing, which uh, can now be done uh, in a great hurry, let's say of the order of a few minutes to capture uh, a whole human genome. But the quantities of data that are being generated in this process are truly enormous. However, one then has, is faced with the opportunity of marshalling it to help with diagnosing and uh, predicting the, the health and well-being, not only of patients, but in the future, the general citizen, who could be armed with their own information and make their own decisions in terms of lifestyle choices. Does VPH address some of those problems of, of data sharing in a clinical context? Very much so, because the virtual physiological human is not only worrying like quite a lot of other projects and initiatives with uh, accessing patient data and using data mining and analytics techniques to um, predict things from the data on individuals. It's actually also in the business of using modeling and simulation. We, these are methods that have come out of the physical sciences and engineering, but are far less common in biology currently or, or medicine. But trying to merge both of those together so that one can have truly personalized and predictive models, let's say starting from an individual's um, imaging data, it could be a CT scan or something like that, that can then be merged with a, a simulation technique. That might be to do with blood flow in the brain, for instance, based on coupling with the image. And if you can do that simulation fast enough, you'll be able to predict the outcome of a surgical intervention before it's done, which will then aid the interventional, as we call it, uh, uh, new, uh, neurologist in terms of the decision they have to take before they do the intervention, which should enhance the you know, outcome of the treatment itself. So what do you see for the future of, of big data in, in medicine? Where do you think that's going? I mean, the, the, the issue here is uh, very clear. I, I often give talks on the, what we call computational biomedicine as an agenda for the 21st century. All of this is going to happen. It's not a dream. The issue is more to do with how quickly, when the floodgates are going to open. And much of it is related to our ability collectively to agree on how to access and manage in a secure way individual patient data. There's a legal and ethical issue there, and if you leave it just to the lawyers, they will always try and lock the data down at, at, at uh, you know, the, the, a penalty, really, for the patients who could benefit from having their data analysed. So in the end, it's what we call a matter of getting the governance proportionate. There's always some risk involved in uh, providing access to patient data but the benefits, we believe, far outweigh those risks. In just the same way as if you have the opportunity to have an online bank account, you typically would prefer to have that than just keep your access to a bank by going in uh, to a bank and asking for records which are on pieces of paper. There's always some risk, but the balance is the thing that matters here.